first things first. This is not a video for professional or established filmmakers. If you fit that category, pay this no mind or hear me out. This is a tips and tricks video geared towards new and emerging artists, particularly student filmmakers. I'm new! I'm new! I don't know what to do! Now, if you're still watching, you're wondering what the hell I'm trying to say. You're wondering why this video is called You Don't Need 4K. Well, here we go. As you may have noticed, all of the previous footage was shot on relatively cheap cameras at 1080p or 2K, which is just a bit higher resolution than 1080. Most of these shots were even done with very affordable lenses. It's not the camera that makes a good film. The camera is nothing but a tool. You are the artist. And with the right tools, you can create something amazing. Never forget, the first and foremost goal of a film should be to tell a story, not have a high enough resolution to screen a film across the side of Stall Mountain in Georgia, although that would be cool. Most of what you shoot at first is going to go on YouTube, or Vimeo, or small film festivals. You may even get a project on Netflix early on, or if you're really good, you'll premiere at Sundance. Either way, getting your film out to audiences so that they can start to recognize you is the most important thing for a new filmmaker. But online streaming does not support 4K yet. And most projectors in film festivals don't stream in 4K, which means shooting your films on 4K will only cost you time and money, not image. 1080p will do just fine for 90% of your work, I promise, and it's very, very cheap to get. Go out and spend a few hundred bucks as opposed to thousands on a Canon T2i or a similar DSLR to start with. I started out with a Canon 7D myself, but nowadays you can also get a Canon 5D Mark II at a very affordable price, although it won't shoot in 60p slow motion as the other two will. Then, pick a decent lens. Canon's L-Series comes to mind. Or you can even try out some of the pretty affordable Rokinon Cinema Primes, which are amazing considering their price. Then, buy a simple DSLR rig to place it on. This will give your camera movement a smoothness it absolutely needs. Plus, you'll look pretty cool with it. Any of these cameras are going to give you great native colors and images. But you have to know how to use them. Step 1. Use the camera. Don't let it use you. Auto anything hates you. Set your camera to manual everything. ISO, white balance, aperture, and focus should always be controlled by you at all times, not the camera. It's tough to master at first, but once you do, you'll never look back. Step 2. 
find the magic lantern. No, it's not a genie or a superhero thing. It's a firmware hack for Canon cameras that essentially makes your camera awesome. While Magic Lantern isn't essential to getting great images, a lot of filmmakers agree that it is worth trying out. I won't spend a bunch of time on this, but you can look it up for yourself at www.magiclantern.fm. Step 3. Install Superflat and CineStyle in your camera. Now, there's a nice tutorial available on Vimeo if you search for this link. Now that your camera has been turned from a DSLR to a film camera, it's time to practice. Go out and shoot stuff. Shoot everything. Shoot everything on manual. Shoot on super flat. Now by now you're asking, why the hell am I shooting on this ugly super flat setting? Step 4. Color correction. I can't say it enough. Color correction, color correction, color correction. Every single thing you watch on TV or in a theater, every commercial, Every film, every TV show is color corrected. The super flat setting increases your camera's dynamic range, making more use of light and shadow. It's essential to getting a cinematic look. Get your hands on some color correction software as well. On Mac, there's Color, Adobe makes Speed Grade, industry standard is DaVinci Resolve. My personal favorite though is Red Giant's Magic Bullet Looks. It's quick, easy, and perfect for small projects like shorts and commercials. Even Robert Rodriguez uses it. You know, the, the other part of it is, um, and this is, I'm kind of on my soapbox here, is that Go I feel it. very strongly that DPs uh, need to color correct their own work. Yes, sir. They need, <laughs> they need to be physically here on a Resolve or, you know, a face light or whatever. And they need to physically do it because if if they don't, they've lost all control. Because in the digital age, you know, you everyone's shooting S, S log and roar, and you know, it's like, you know, yes, they've got to they've got to do a nice lighting job, but so much of the control of the image, and if they want to be the auteur of the image, they need to come in and and take control of this part of the process. You know? yeah. Step five: shoot some more. That's pretty much it. Practice makes better, not perfect. You'll never be perfect, but you can possibly be better than most. Step six, don't be afraid to mimic your favorite cinematographers and filmmakers. Even they had to learn from someone. Step seven, lighting. Simple as your choices. You know, it's, it's what, you know, one light coming through a window might be quite beautiful. That's all you need. You don't need six other lights because why are you doing all of this by habit or by need yeah. shoot during magic hour it's free it's pretty and when lighting inside simple is almost always better step eight trust your instincts don't spend all day wondering if something is on the perfect settings for the perfect time of day and the perfect time of everything what it boils down to is did you get a cool shot if the answer is yes, you probably did something right. The key is doing something right consistently. Step nine. Well, this isn't really a step. I ran out of steps. But if you have no clue what Magic Lantern or a Canon 7D or a, a white balance or an ISO or anything is that I mentioned before, well, there's this thing called Google. Google it. Google is magic. It knows everything. So, do all this, and you should be able to pull off a cinematic look. But I thought this was about 4K. Well, it was, and how you don't need it to make a good-looking film. Think about it. If you can make 1080p or even 720p look great, imagine what you could do with three times the resolution.